Hey folks, Ken here. Just thought I'd do a quick update, um, sort of um, bad news, good news type video. Um, just testing the water at the minute, um, doing ammonia with the NT Labs liquid kit and doing nitrite with the HANA tester. Come back to those in a minute. Um, just have stuff switched off here to stop the noise. Um, go back to the pond and talk to you where I am. I mentioned last week, even the, though I did the FMG treatment a few weeks back, still had a lot of flashing with the fish. Um, it, it was at a point in the evenings that they were literally queuing up the flash on the, um, the drain covers. Um, and I took out several and scraped them to no avail um, found nothing that I did notice there on Thursday night my shag was looking particularly sorry for himself was kind of hanging up around the corner not very active um, and had this sort of white haze on him which is a sign that there's an overproduction of, of um, mucus or the, 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 the slime coat so I got him out. Um, I didn't sedate him because I know I was reading a bit. People were saying it's not great sedating koi to scrape them because you're also sedating the parasites if there's any there and they're harder to find. So I took him out. Now he's very, like most jags, he's easy to handle. He's not skittish. So I got him out and I did a quick, three good scrapes on him. Um, in fact, one of his scales came off when I was scraping. Not that I did it hard. I reckon it was probably just damage can't even see it there it was just damage from um him flashing there is a little bit of damage there's no redness on him anyway um got the scrapes inside and very quickly i was able to see white spot um and not a few you know one or two now this i suppose the scrapes and you know i got a good scrape along both sides of his back um from the gills back to the, to the tail and then under on his belly so the three of them had two or three white spots on it. They're quite easy to find because they're, I, I, I'll tag the video because I videoed it. I have the, the, the grabber on the, the Apex Practitioner. I'll stick it on the end of this so you can see it, but it's just a round thing and you can see the internal of it spinning. It's white spots. So the good news is I found out what the problem was because it was something really bothering them and it was bothering me because it was bothering them. The good news is I found out what it is, but the bad news is it's white spot, which can be difficult enough to treat. So I've been talking to a friend of mine, Niall, who is more experienced than me. And he was just saying with the FMG mixes, they generally tend to be on the weaker side and they tend to be a bit um, conservative in terms of the treatment. And he was recommending, recommending that because it's white spot, you know, probably the normal what what um Kushuri say with their FMG mix is every seven days for up to three um treatments and there's a dosage which I, which I follow that works out of four hundred and forty milligrams or milliliters rather from my ponds. The UV is off as well so you can see the water's a little bit um it's not too bad considering it's been off since Thursday night. Um so what we're going to do is, is follow the sort of well-tested schedule. We go for one, five, um, I think 11 and 14 days, just to really make sure, because there's a cycle with white spot. And as far as I know, the treatment doesn't kill the eggs. So you need to get the eggs to hatch. If you only do a couple of treatments and don't get all the eggs, it will just come back. And I've, I've had experience of white spot in um, aquariums. Um, although I most sort of only have koi for the last couple of years, I've kept aquarium fish for over 20 years. Um, it can, it's probably one of the more persistent and there are some strains of it I, I know that come in from Asia, I believe, that are even harder to treat. But anyway, found out what it was and it's being treated. Um, I've got the pumps off inside. I did have, you can still see a little bit of scratching, which I'd expect to see. I've only put one treatment in. Um, you can see the, there's very little there, but there was, there was a huge amount. Um, 
It's already 10 minutes is up. I'm just going to check my ammonia, which is, I've never had ammonia in this pond. Now, whether the test kit is crap um, or I just don't have ammonia, but um, let's go here with this. You can see um, that's a very bright yellow from what I can see. Never had ammonia. What I'll do is um, I'm actually over next Saturday. There's a group of us from Dublin going over to the BKKS show just outside Birmingham. Um, so I'll come back in and read the nitrite now. I expect the nitrite to be up. Um, so I might get one of those Hannah ammonia checkers when I'm over there. We're just doing a day trip. There's about eight of us. My youngest son is coming as well. Eleven that helps me out with the pond has a bit of an interest. So we're flying over from Dublin early on Saturday morning. I think it's an eight o'clock flight and then back around half six on Saturday evening. So um, hopefully you UK bike get base guys. I might see some of you there. It would be great. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I had my spin drifter off a fair bit. I, I just don't like the effect and it's a much nicer view of the Koi um, from above when it's not on. But I did notice a lot of algae growth. Um, not blanket weed, just a lot more green in the pond. And I think what it was, um, without the spin drift, there's a bit more carbon dioxide. Not to the point now where it was bothering the fish. They weren't gasping or anything, but I think it favoured the algae growth so i think when i have the spin drifter working in this weather it increases the oxygen and there's less carbon dioxide for the the algae so um it's uh, it's definitely backed off now maybe the fmg treatment has done similar um has helped us but it's it's definitely backed off so i keep the, the spin drifter particularly during the treatment but i will just keep it on um at this stage and other good news is I have Lily blossoming. You can see them there. I have two buds on this one. I have these two. I mentioned those before. There was one of the Lily split in two. That's one on the front and there's one that was split in two on the back. The one on the back always had these curly looking leaves. It's just strange. It does have one leaf there, another leaf there that looks normal, but there's no buds on it. I think I just gave up on them. They did nothing last year. I have two buds on that one. Um, and a tree buds on this one. So they're really coming on. The flowers only last a few days, to be honest, and they open sort of for eight hours in the day and then they close up at night. And you can see this one here, whether there's probably stuff eating it, but it's just generally disintegrating. And um, I might get a couple, whether I'll do it this season or next season, but they're, they're really doing nothing. And there's a good bit of fertilizer in them as well. Um, and as I say, the ones in the front are really bloomed and there's plenty of flowers. The ones in the back are just shite. Um, and there's little stones from, I'd say that's the fish just digging in the mouth. But it's um, happy with that. The FNG doesn't seem to bother the lilies, to be honest. Thought it might damage the flowers, but it hasn't. The, the spillway was completely green uh, and that's actually died off. Now, whether it's the FNG or the increase in the oxygen in the water, um i don't know um but it's it is dying off i'll get something i really need something i have an abrasive non-scratch pads i use you can get them in tesco for around 70 cents and um, a pack of the six of them i'll kneel up there and i'll have a go and clean that off it's, it's, it's not possible to do it with any of the up there the abrasive um the other thing as well i noticed with the drum um i dropped my tricoline down because of the medication normally in the summer i have the tricoline up to 4,000 liters a week which is about a 20 percent water change which would be normal when the fish are eating and all the rest um just going in and see the nitrite the drum is working very hard as i mentioned before and i'd say it's washing about four or five times um 112 that's way up um I am gonna have to back up the food. So that's sorry, that's that I, I'd say I'll have to check, but I'd say that's approaching point zero or sorry, point five parts per million. This isn't isn't in this is parts per billion and it's not the same scale that we're normally used to. So a sixty I know is around point two. 
so that's approaching 0.5 so i'm gonna have to back off i just fed them there now i won't feed them the problem is with the fmg is it does knock the um the filter back sorry what i was saying was when i had this turned down to point below 0.2 thinking it was all right which is about 2000 liters a week i noticed the level on the pond was dropping um so the drum was flushing out more water and the trickle in was putting back and um, so i've had to turn it up now I, i'm doing okay there at point two four which is about two and a half thousand liters a week um but it does mean as well that with a drum you know i'd say with a normal system you could probably just turn off your trickle in uh when you're you're treating with medication but because the drum is using water from the pond to flush itself um you have to continuously top it up so it means you're diluting the medication and particularly more so at this time of year when everything's active and the drum is, is working hard um i'm not sure how much the drum uses i've never measured it on each wash i would imagine it's between 10 and 20 liters you know it, it goes for about 20 seconds or so and there's four or five jets i don't know how many order um how many do I have these things? And it's quite a powerful pump. No, I have six of them. Um, so it does um, go for um, a fair bit. So anyway, it's, it's just one of those things with a drum. Now, the other thing is with medication, I would say when you put medication like FMG in, it's active for probably 48 hours. And, you know, it's probably doing nothing now. I'll do a water change tomorrow. I'll just stick some sodium thiosulfate in and stick the tap in it for about five or six hours at the hose and let it do a water change. And then tomorrow night, I'll do the second treatment. Um, but that's it, as I say, um, I'm gonna have to back off on the feeding, which is not something you want to do um, this time of year, but I'm gonna have to because that's not doing the fish any favors either. Um, you know, I'm going to be at this treatment um, until the week after next. You know, it's a white spot. It's not the end of the world once you catch it early. It's just a pain in the arse to treat and it takes time. And then when you want to be enjoying the pond, it's it just looks like shit. Um, but such is life. I know in terms of my problems, I've seen a, a, a few other people have far, far more serious problems than I have, so I feel um, lucky in that way that it's only white spot I'm having to deal with. Um, but anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, I'm going to turn these back on. I said, you want to I'll show you the spin drifter going. Um, so our UV is off. Shower back on. Um, you'll see what I mean about viewing the fish from above. Um, and these are off. Um, spin drifters going um it is useful when it's particularly your medication i don't use it during the winter now there's no need but you can see it does cause a rippling effect and you can't see the fish as easy but then i could just turn it off when i want to see the fish um you know it's not it's it's it's, it's, it's there for the fish's benefit and they're definitely benefiting and there's less less algae um yeah i reckon the white spot these two little fish i bought that i think they're the little orange fella and there's a lemon fella as well there i think they're doyitsu kuhakus if anybody has um or kujakus there's the yellow fella there has anything any other um identification please let me know in the comments i did get those there's the little orange fella they're nice fish now my wife picked them out she liked them but um we reckon they brought the white spot on listen it happens you know i know the guy the dealer is very well respected in ireland um i did let him know as a courtesy listen i've got white spot i reckon it was your two fish you may want to just check the bat so he says listen i check them every week i haven't noticed anything but you know there does seem to be a lot of parasites around this time of year and um you know it happens and just treat it but uh one of those things yeah you always take a chance you know i don't have a quarantine set up as, as some people do and it is a good idea for stuff like that that if you do find a problem you're treating a small batch of fish rather than a whole pound but not that fmg is hugely expensive 
Um, but anyway, leave it at that. If you can identify those fish, it'd be great. They are. I haven't noticed them flashing now, but you know, generally maybe it's something they're they're able to deal with. But um, definitely the bigger fish and the two that were hit the hardest were the chag and the akumatsuba, which is there somewhere. They're the two fish that have the worst um, carp box. And I'm just wondering the fact that maybe there, there's the, the Akumatsuba there, you can see him coming up. He he also looks hazy. They they were the ones that were soaking the most or hit the most. So I wonder is it because their immune system, the fact they have the carrot pops isn't what it should be. Um why they were hit harder, I don't know, but anyway. Listen, I'll leave it at that. Hope to see some of you on Saturday. Um and um, I'll talk to you hopefully maybe next week. Cheers. Thanks a lot.